Thank you very much. Um, before I start today, I just want to acknowledge um, Salma Hussein. Um, wow. I, um, so my, my presentation is entitled Goosebumps and Tears. And I'll get into that in a second. But I want to share um, something that came to me at about 2, 2.30 in the morning, is whenever I present, um, I present around the country to school districts from all over the world. And often I stand beside BIPOC colleagues. And when we finish, I always say, it's so energizing. And my BIPOC colleagues will say, it's so exhausting. And I think about Liza who told her story and Salma who told her story today. And we invite our BIPOC families to constantly tell their story. And then we don't do anything. And we don't move and we don't change. And if you weren't inspired today by her sharing her story, then you shouldn't be in this business. And so my challenge to all of you, especially the ones that look like me, is use that message to go back to your schools and do something different on Monday. Do something different that will inspire and motivate our humans who look like Quinnell, Ashley, Liza, and Salma. Thank you all for choosing to lead. Thank you all for standing up here and leading. But it's upon us to impact change. So thank you, Selma. All right, let's do it. There it is, 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes to change your life. And I plan to do it through a message that is just my lived experiences. 50 years I've been on the planet, I've been waiting to tell this story to people. So thank you for joining me. Goosebumps and tears, how to live a life filled with passion and purpose. When I think about goosebumps and tears, I'm going to ask you, if I ask everybody in the audience, close your eyes and imagine a time in your life where you experienced goosebumps and tears. I'll give you 10 seconds and go. And welcome back. Most of you in that moment, you thought of a time when your children were born, Maybe it was when you got married. Maybe it was when you got this job. Maybe this is your dream job. But I want you to think deeper. When was the last time you experienced goosebumps and tears? Mine? Three minutes ago. When that incredible leader, my colleague, walked off this stage. Because this morning, in our conversations, <laughs> it was like both of us, like, I'm nervous. I'm anxious. And not one person could tell here today. Goosebumps and tears, watching her live that and tell her story to make an impact on others. So as you think about goosebumps and tears, what I want you to know, that's your emotional compass. Every time in your day you experience goosebumps and tears, it means you just experience something that matters. Something that touches you, I call it purpose. For me, it's a hug in the hallway. It's the kid in the morning, good morning, Mr. Gretzky! Every day. Those are the things that give me life and give me energy. So, purpose, the things that give us life. Passion, the amount of energy that you commit to the things that give you life. I can't move on without acknowledging your current reality, because you all do what I do. So probably some point this morning you were checking to see if you had, it's Friday, sub coverage, right? Oh no, who am I going to pull to put into here? Um, what am I going to do today? Oh my gosh, yesterday when I wasn't there, can you believe that kid went oh, off the rails again? And you're all carrying that. 
And so I put this little chart up here because every one of you, you're here and every day you show up and your tank is full and you say, today's going to be a great day. And then you walk in the office and it's problem after problem after problem. I was talking to a gentleman in the back yesterday when uh, Joe asked us, first eight things you do. I almost vomited listening to the first eight things that guy did. But you know what he said at the end of it? He's like, hey, I'm just happy if my red light's not blinking. Because it's one less thing I need to do. And all day long, you show up with a full tank and you go home exhausted. I love the one where he's trying to pull it back. No, I got it. I'm going to stay full of energy. That's all of you. Current reality. Education or University of Minnesota did this survey. It's all you. Sure, your voices are up there. 19% of you believe this job is sustainable. <laughs> That's going to recruit a lot of people, right, Roger? <laughs> hey, we got a job for you. About 19% of people that do it think you can really do it. <laughs> the next stat I'll show you is the average one of you is putting in about 55 to 65 hours. Once again, Roger, that'll recruit them. You get 168 hours every week, 60 of them you're going to be working. And... You're going to be exhausted at the end of every day. So my motivation is this. You don't have to live the life that way. So I'll go back to what I started with. Goosebumps and tears, the things that fill you up, the things that give you life. Most of you, most of us, most humans I've ever met with in my life, leave it to chance. They be like going through the day, get some goosebumps and tears, like, ooh, that felt good. And then they step right into negativity again. The idea of goosebumps and tears and how to live a life filled with passion and purpose is this. You know what it is that gives you life? And then you repeat it as many times as you possibly can. I can repeat it. Some of the things that give me life, I can do in two minutes between crappy meeting and crappy meeting. That's how we stay recharged. So I'm going to invite you on a journey. Here's the deal. You're invited to live differently. So if you choose to follow this, great. I will tell you, it will change your life forever. The goal is, is you work worse, less than 40 hours every week, and you're actually full of energy at the end of the day. If I told you that, we'd recruit a lot more principals. Okay? So three things are the key to living a life filled with passion and purpose. The first, understanding what goosebumps and tears are and how they drive you. Number two, as you look up there, is just a law of energies. Everything you do every day, every breakout session you went to over the last three days did one of three things for your energy. And then the last thing on there, when you look at it on there, is a compass. So it's just a compass. If I ask you, I saw people like writing notes all week. You're never going to go back to those notes. <laughs> okay? I'm just being honest. I got folders and journals full of things I wrote. Take one thing, or two things, or three things. If you want to take one thing from my presentation, take a picture of the compass. So goosebumps and tears, I think you're getting the idea here. The things that give you life, the, th the things that fill you up, know what they are. Journal them. Have an idea. The kids, the people, everything that gives you life, have a solid understanding of that. Each of you, every week, gets 168 hours. That's it. Time is the only resource you can't save, by the way. Like, I can't say, like, next week's busy week. I'm going to take five hours from this week, put them to next week. So I got 173 because it's a busy week. And I will share with you, however you spend your 168 is what you value. In your hallways of your school, where are you spending time? Because it's what you value. Show me where you spend your time, show me where you spend your money, and I will tell you what you value as an organization. So, goosebumps and tears, spend the time in the things that matter most. This one changed my life forever. All it is, is a law of energies. Okay? I'm going to take like just a couple minutes on this one, but 
Three things happen whenever you have an exchange, okay? Anything that you do or any person that you interact with does one of three things. It either sucks your energy dry, okay? And right now, and I always pose this to leaders, who are the people in your organization that drain you, okay? Just put that picture in your head. Yep, got it, check. Another thing that people will do or things will do is neutral energy. I don't gain energy from you, but I don't, I don't lose energy. So in our world, that's a plus, okay? Now the bottom line and the thing that we don't spend enough time in is that bottom right corner. What are the things that give you life? You'll see a little compass down in the corner. That's what you want to guide your time. The things that give you life, the things that fill you up, the people that fill you up. And when you are a principal, those people don't show up in your office, <laughs> right? They're the other ones. And you'll be in a meeting and they'll be like looking in the window, are you in there? <laughs> so pay attention. It's a law of energy, right? If I end a meeting with a two, or somebody that sucks the energy out of me, I know in my building where my fours are. So I like go cruise into that classroom and sometimes the teacher be like, you need something? No. <sighs> Just need a little bit of that positive energy and I'm on. But if you don't know where your pockets of positivity are, where your a positive energy is, guess what you do all day? You know which box. And that's why at the end of every day, you're absolutely exhausted. I know my time is ticking, so here's your compass. Bottom line, if you want to take one picture, if you want to take one thing to remind you how to live your life. Where's my northern Minnesota principles? Hey, shout out. Okay, if I'm in the middle of the boundary waters, ready? And I'm absolutely lost, and all I have is a compass, how do I find direction? No compass readers? What? Sun. Oh, sun's one way. What if it's dark? I got a compass, remember? True north. All right, thank you. All right, nobody's done orienteering. I used to be a PE teacher, all right? So your compass, you'll always find true north. Red in the shed and then go. All right, never, never mind. Okay, true north. So whenever you get lost, and we get lost daily in this job, it's exhausting. Your compass is always due north. Find what gives you life, walk towards that, it'll recharge you, and then you can go back into the crap and the heavy and the stuff that really weighs us down. And if you're really lost, some people, like when I taught orienteering to like high school kids, they'd be like, north is that way, and they'd be standing like this. Because sometimes red goes in the white shed and it's, I'll get you all mixed up and you're going like north and south. So even if you're lost with this compass, guess what you find? Anybody? Your strengths. Okay? You're, you're grounded in what gives you life. Your counterpoint is what are you good at? And if you find a life where you are living in the things that give you life and you're also doing the things that you're good at, you're going to live a life filled with passion and purpose and you're going to be much happier. The other two are just there to help you. The one on the right, mentors. Start with one and then move along the line. People who get you, people who understand you, people that will remind you, hey, looks like you had a tough day. You might want to go back to the kindergarten rooms. <laughs> My secretary should be like, man, that meeting, that was tough. You should get out there and find a four. So you need those people on your journey that help remind you of where to go. On the left-hand side, Salma and I spend a lot of time in this. Courage it takes to stand in front of a group of people all goes to the left. It's a belief in who you are. That's why I choose to wear this shirt. Because there's a lot of days where a lot of people make me doubt myself. So I have to remind myself, I have to look in the mirror and say, be you, show up as you, know what gives you life, know what your strengths are. And if the people around you don't want that, then don't be there. But you can ultimately make that choice. 
This is just a quick snapshot of how y'all are living your life. Okay? So the compass on the right, <laughs> that's a life filled with passion and purpose. And the compass on the left is the compass that's exhausting all of you. When you go to work, what's getting your attention? Biggest fire. Might not even be like the kid who's bleeding, right? Might be the kid who's something that's even worse in a wheelchair. You have to call 911. And that kid who's bleeding, we've got to just leave them. Because the biggest fire is guiding everything you do. And then as you look at that, the counterpoint of that biggest fire is your staff. Who do you give your time to? Do you give your time and energy as a leader of your building to the people that fill you up? Or are you giving your time to the twos? The people that drain you. They find you, right? Twos find you. The energy suckers, they come find you. They stalk you. They stalk you. <laughs> the fours, the fours, the people that give you energy, you know why you can't find them? Because they're protecting their energy. When they go into the staff lounge, they're like, oh. So they stay in their classrooms. They deliver amazing work for all students. They're doing the equity work. And in most cases, we're not lifting them up. And on the right and the left, that's if you get to it. That's your kids, right? And those are the places that you want to spend time. So bottom line, I'm going to leave you with this, OK? I'm going to leave you with this. I gave you a little bit of information. If you're in my like hour-long breakout, there's a lot more to it. But at the beginning, I said 10 minutes to change your life. Ultimately, no one else in the planet cares about you. Sorry. Like your district leadership, they are awesome, but at the same time, they hired you to do a job. If you don't take care of you, nobody will. And so your two options, when you look at this, because whenever somebody gives you an invite, right, they give you that RSVP. So you make the choice today. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that and start with one, two, or three hours. Biggest tip I could give you, take one person that fills your tank, maybe one person over the last three days who like, damn, that was a solid connect. On Monday, reach out to them and schedule them for one hour. Because going from where you're currently living to the way you want to live, it doesn't just happen on Monday. It starts with one hour. It might start with 30 minutes of something that fills you up and then continue to build on it. I hope this helped at least one of you better understand who you are. I'll leave you with just a little bit of music because that's something that fills me up and gives me energy. Enjoy the rest of your conference, and enjoy your Monday back.